You know those award shows. The cliché is that it's an honor just to be nominated, but that happens to be true. Whoever wins it in the end, I don't know. Sometimes it feels arbitrary. Sometimes it feels like it's deserving. I wore a thong and a bra and a wig. Those things hurt. I mean, thongs? Like, they dig in. It takes a tough man to be a woman. There's no experience like on-the-job training. Godzilla's a monster for the 90s. He's been working out. I love acting, but I want to explore other things. The Family Ties role was the first of many gay roles that I've ended up playing. I remember that I made them laugh, and it made me feel good, because it really cracked them up. I've been doing silly voices since I was a child. Just watching Jack Lemon made me want to get into this business. I was a huge fan of comedy and movies and TV growing up, and I was able to memorize and mimic a lot of things, not realizing that that meant I probably wanted to be an actor. I just really, really amused myself and my friends with memorizing entire George Carlin or Steve Martin albums. I was 16 and did a play at school. I was a rather good student. And then I did a play when I was 16 and completely lost all my concentration for academics. I did a lot of theater in college and I knew that not many people make it, but I just figured, well, I really want to try acting while I'm young, and I don't ever want to look back and say that I never gave it a try. I fully figured I'd be back in grad school, probably for psychology. Women are, in general, less shallow visually. If their man gains 10, 20 pounds, they don't care as much. But I've been with women over the years when my weight fluctuated, and they're definitely more interested physically when I am in really great shape. Guys will definitely settle for women who get the joke, but a woman who can make you laugh, it's not high on a guy's must list. Perhaps it should be. In my cranky old age, I actually prefer recording alone now, on The Simpsons, for example, because I find that the director can just focus on what I'm doing, and I can do a lot of variations. A lot of times, when I record with a group, I'll stay after class for another hour or two. Being funny with a funny voice is more my comfort zone, a broader character that I try to humanize, a kind of silly or wacky persona that I try to fill in. My ultimate is Peter Sellers, his ability to go broad and somehow humanize that and be hilarious at the same time. He was just relatable, real at the same time as insane. I find Ricky Gervais absolutely hilarious. Steve Martin is another hero of mine, he's a genius. I've done literally 100, 150 different characters. Some of them have only appeared for a line or three. But the point is, every sound I can make has been harvested. I've been divorced and I had to get back out there be single again and do some of that in the genuinely miserable state where you really do wonder what the hell is going on. And you feel like trying to have casual conversation with someone you don't know on the surface of the moon or something. You can't be funny for funny's sake. You try to get as outrageous situation as you can, but it always has to be believable and based in real character motivations and what people would really do. The craft Emmys are kind of the kids' table at Thanksgiving. You're not really invited to the big dance. 
It's still really, really exciting, and the statue still counts. I don't really remember much about the 60s at all. You know, 1970 is the first year I remember pretty well. The Iraq War. No one took to the streets over it. It certainly would have been appropriate. If anybody even hinted we should, you were called un-American and not supporting the troops. When I was young in L.A. and I couldn't get into clubs or restaurants, I would call imitating celebrities and get a table, and it would work often. I was either Stallone or Mickey Rourke. This is sly. I may be late, but my buddy Hank will be there early. You know, I was a huge fan of comedy and movies and TV growing up, and I was able to memorize and mimic a lot of things, not realizing that that meant I probably wanted to be an actor. I had kind of sworn off network TV a while ago. When you're on a series that's been cancelled, there's a little bit of a stink on you. When you do well in a movie that's seen as really great, you're revitalized for six weeks. I bartended for a catering company for two or three years. I'm very happy, I get to keep working, it's an insanely fortunate thing. I joke that my niche in Hollywood has been naked foreigners. Women are, in general, less shallow visually. If their man gains 10, 20 pounds, they don't care as much. Getting over someone is a grieving process. You mourn the loss of the relationship, and that's only expedited by out of sight, out of mind. But when you walk outside and see them on a billboard or on TV or on the cover of a magazine, it reopens the wound. It's a high-class problem, but it's real. I ask for a lot of advice from different fathers, all kinds of dads. I've done literally 100, 150 different characters. I have no new voices, they've all been used. A lot of times, when I record with a group, I'll stay after class for another hour or two and go, let me try a bunch of things I was thinking of as you were doing that. You have to always physicalize when you do animation recording. Otherwise, you won't get the performance right. I would love to do Broadway again. When you mimic everyone, sometimes authority figures really don't appreciate it, which is not an original story. And pretty much every comedian has some tale of that. I tend to not watch things that are current. And then, if everybody swears it's amazing, then I'll like watch the whole series in a weekend. It's not really difficult to go from one voice into the next. It's always impressive when talented comedians are easy laughers or generous with their laughs.